You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. Episode 9, You Are a Toxic Waste Bucket. In this episode, we are discussing toxic waste and how it finds itself into our foods, into the products we use every day, and ultimately into our bodies, affecting our lives, nutrition, health, and wellness. And now, Dr. Taylor Crick. All right, welcome to The Real Health Podcast. As always, I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, coming to you with the most cutting-edge information that's available today for real health. And today what we're going to be talking about is one of the biggest things that's, that we're dealing with that's facing us today with our health, and that is toxicity. Are you a toxic waste bucket? Uh, and the answer, unfortunately, is yes. You know, we are all a toxic waste bucket. And so I'm going to explain that concept in a little bit. But if you're just joining us for the first time here on the Real Health Podcast, once again, like I said, my name is Dr. Taylor Crick. I am the owner and operator of Align Utah, a, a maximized living wellness clinic in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so I'm a licensed chiropractic physician. I'm also trained in, in customized nutrition supplementation, uh, spinal corrective care, and you know several other certifications there. But what we look at each and every week are the five essentials of maximized living. And these are the five key areas in your life or in anybody's life that give the opportunity to interfere with or really sabotage your health, your life, uh, your potential, and your future. So you have to be addressing each of these five areas. And toxicity is essential number five. So essential number one is actually maximizing your mindset, changing the way that you view and you manage your health. And a good example of this, you know, going along the toxicity line is cigarettes. You know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, it would have been much more normal to see somebody smoking a cigarette out in public, right? Uh, but in the research was out there then about how cigarettes were toxic and how they were causing cancer and things like that. But not as many people had switched their mindset. They had it, you know, they may have heard it, but they hadn't changed their paradigm till, till now, you know, you see somebody smoking a cigarette in a public place and you think, what is that person doing? Or if they're smoking around your kids or anything like that, you think about it differently because our society, our culture has had a paradigm shift when it comes to cigarettes and toxicity. And just like with anything, you have to shift your mindset before you're going to take any action steps, before you're going to make any changes in a positive direction. So that has to be essential number one. Essential number two is maximizing your body's nerve supply. So your body has an incredible nerve supply that runs and controls every single aspect of your health and every single function of your body. There's an incredible healing power inside your body and electrical power that runs from your brain down the spinal cord and out through those nerves. And if those messages are getting through at 100%, uninterrupted, uninterfered with, your body can heal and function at 100% the way that it is supposed to. Essential number three is maximizing your quality nutrients. So that's looking at your nutrition. So Look back in the archives. You know, if you're curious about this, our first few episodes were on a total food makeover and the three biggest changes that you need to make to, to have a total food makeover. And, you know, a lot of us know today that the food we're putting in our bodies can either move us in a healthier direction or it can move us in a sicker direction. So we need to be very specific about the foods that we're putting in our bodies. Go back to the past episodes, download those, learn those, listen to those, and make those changes so that you can know how to maximize your quality nutrients. Essential number four is exercise and maximizing your oxygen and your lean muscle mass and looking at the way that your body is moving and exercising. And essential number five, the one we're going to talk about today, minimizing your exposures to toxicity. So that is exactly what we're going to get into. And I love the way that they have worded that. It is minimize your exposure to toxicity. You can never eliminate, you know, we always say as a joke, we always say, you know, we don't sell plastic bubbles. Uh, that's the only way maybe today that you could live without toxins because they are in our air supply. If you live in Utah, you know, we have the inversions uh, and, and pollution and things. They're in our water. They're in our food. They're in our personal care products. They're even in our bedding and our pillows in our in our fillings. And toxins are everywhere. And the reason that this is so important 
is because the research now proves and leads it and shows that, you know, and, and here's a quote that says 95% of all cancer is due to diet and the accumulation of toxins. So that's why it's such a huge concern is that, you know, with cancer, you know, through the roof, uh, with heart disease through the roof, with autoimmune conditions through the roof, with asthma through the roof, allergies, autism, all of these have a toxicity component to them. And so you can be doing everything right in your life. You know, you could be having a great diet and great exercise, great spine, great relationships, all, all that. But if you are toxic, it is going to sabotage your body's ability to be healthy. And so just with that, you know, just a little bit of a background on what's going on, because, you know, we're talking about a, are you a toxic waste bucket? And what that means is that all of our bodies, you can picture them like a bucket. And so a bucket, you know, if you continue just filling and filling and filling a bucket, it is going to overflow. And so that is the problem is that when you become too toxic, you get the symptoms of toxicity, which can be many, many things. You know, all the diseases that I just talked about, autoimmunity, allergies, autism, ADHD, you know, those are, those are just the A's in the, in the 21st century um, perfect storm, you know, diseases that we're seeing these days. But there are others, you know, cancer, hormone imbalances, migraines, brain fog, lack of energy, inability to lose weight. How about that? How many people in our country would you say suffer? Suffer from you know uh, three out of the, three out of those things that I just named, like inability to lose weight, brain fog, and low energy. Sound like anybody you know? Uh, yeah, most people today are toxic, and that's because we keep filling our buckets and we never empty it. So over the course of the next few episodes, we're going to be talking about sources of toxins, how you're filling your bucket. So you're picturing, you know, a bucket, you know, a water bucket, and, and say you have a hose going into that bucket. What's going to happen if you put a second hose and a third hose and a fourth hose in that bucket? It's going to fill up a lot faster. So those are all exposures to toxins filling up your toxicity bucket. So what we want to talk about is where those sources are coming from, how you can remove some of those hoses, how you can slow some of the flow of, of toxins you know, from pouring into your body and into your cells, and also how you can dump that bucket, how you can detoxify naturally some of the herbs, some of the supplements, some of the food, some of the activities that you can do that help your body detoxify. But the reason that this is you know, such a, a massive concern right now is because toxicity creates disease. And if you look at the diseases you know, that we're seeing in our country right now, obesity prevalence among children and adolescents has tripled since 1980. Autism rates, they are now, autism rates in Utah here, one in 47. We are the worst state in the country. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, about how toxicity plays a role in that. One in 47 kids is autistic. There's nearly 10 million children in our country, children in our country, taking psychotropic drugs. There's one in three Americans that are struggling with insomnia or sleep issues. One in 10 kids have asthma, one in, tw one in 12 adults. And, you know, just look at the epidemic of, of, of hormonal imbalances, hormone things like, um, and, and even autoimmunity, and then even thyroid disease. You know, these things are through the roof, and they all have a toxicity component. And so when you look at where these toxins are coming from and you look at what we're getting in our bodies, you start to see why this is such a big concern. And so since 1950, this is crazy, since 1950, so in the last 65 years, 70,000 new chemical compounds have been invented and dispersed into our environment. Okay, so that's scary. These are 70,000 new chemical compounds that didn't exist, that aren't natural, that have been invented and dispersed into our environment. That's through the air, that's through the food, that's through our manufacturing, that's through everything. Uh, only a fraction of these, a small, small fraction of these have been tested for human toxicity. And, and you know, this comes from a book, uh, Raising Children Toxin-Free by, you know, a couple MDs. And it says, we're conducting a massive clinical toxicity trial and our children and their children are the experimental animals. And that is scary. Uh, 150 different chemicals that are found in the home are connected to allergies, birth defects, cancer, and psychological disorders. That comes from the Consumer Protection Agency. 
Here's some cancer stats. You know, in 1901, cancer was pretty rare, one out of 8,000 people. Since the Industrial Revolution, the cancer rate today has risen to one in three and closer to one in two. That's from the American Cancer Society. For, of the personal care products, that's one of the big, big problems is personal care products are one of the biggest sources of our toxins. And of the chemicals found in personal care products, 884 of them are toxic. 146 of these chemicals cause tumors. 218 of them cause reproductive complications. 778 different chemicals cause acute toxicity. 314 cause biological mutations. 376 cause skin and eye irritation. That is insane. That is from a U.S. House of Representatives toxicity report. And what they're finding, too, when we talk about the accumulation of toxins, what they're finding is that as more toxins are introduced to our environment, the level of toxins stored in our fat cells has risen. So that's the concern when you talk about a toxic bucket is, you know, these things accumulate in your fat cells and they get detoxed at a very slow rate. So as you're just filling up your bucket, filling up your bucket faster than you're emptying it, that leads to a problem. So you got to make sure that you slow down the flow of filling your bucket and you also got to make sure that you start emptying that bucket. In fact, one study showed they tested the fat uh, fat cells of people and they found that 100% of the people uh, tested positive for a chemical called 1,4-dichlorobenzene, which is a chemical found in most household you know, deodorizers and air fresheners. So that's crazy. Uh, and the CDC has actually studied this too. You know, in 2009, they put out a report on the total body burden. And since 1999, they've measured 219 chemicals in people's blood and urine. Okay, so there are 219 different chemicals, 75 of them are new, never seen before. These are things like bisphenol A, which most of us have heard today, BPA, right, that that it's in our water bottles, or we see the sticker that says BPA-free, arsenic, so heavy metals, triclosins, that's something that's in uh, anything that says antibacterial, antibacterial hand soap, triclosins are in that, very, very toxic. Perfluorinated chemicals, that's PFOAs, it's one of the biggest things why, uh, why uh, nonstick or, um, oh, what is the word for n- the nonstick cookware, Teflon, Teflon cookware, one of the reasons why those are banned in many countries and scheduled to be banned in our country is because of the PFOAs, the perfluorinated chemicals, that they know that those release. There's volatile organic compounds. So that's something that, you know, you can, you can have somebody come in and they can measure volatile organic compounds and they'll measure them, you know, in the middle of your living room and maybe they'll be, they'll probably still be in a dangerous level. But as they get closer to your cleaning supplies closet. They can measure just even in the air closer to where you keep your cleaning supplies. They can measure these volatile organic compounds just in the air. So it's incredibly important to know where you're getting toxins from and also how you can get rid of them. But I want to talk today in particular just about toxicity in general and about the problem. So you got two real sources of toxins. One's exogenous, uh, which is outside the body, you know. So that's from things like your prescriptions, uh, your environment, you know, your air, or maybe, you know, you roll around in the grass that's been sprayed with a pesticide or herbicide or, or something, fungicide. Um, that's environmental, you know, your water too. Dietary, so that's things like MSG, things like artificial sweeteners, things like food dyes that are known toxins. Aspartame is another huge one. Known toxins, known neurotoxins that you are purposely putting inside your mouth. Then there are some other exogenous ones like the dangerous, you know, fat soluble ones like from your skincare products, from your personal care products. Those you're getting exogenous, they're outside the body. You also have endogenous uh, metabolic byproducts that are toxic. But what we're going to focus on with the toxic bucket are more of those exogenous or ones that come from outside of the body. So make sure that you tune in to the next couple episodes to find out more specifically exactly what those things are. But I want to go through a few of them right now and really just scratch the surface uh, with some of these toxins and how they're accumulating and filling our bucket. So, you know, if you look at the, the, the food supply for first off, you know, the FDA has approved uh, 3,000, over 3,000 artificial food additives, preservatives, and colorings. And they estimate that the average person ingests, you know, takes in, eats 
140 to 150 pounds of additives every year. So I don't weigh much more than that. You know, I weigh about 160 pounds. I most people take in my body weight of additives every single year just from your normal food supply. So say you're you're doing some really great things. You've got you know you've got a water filter, you've got a, an air filter. You're you know you're you're conscious and aware of where toxins are coming from, but you're still just eating the typical standard American diet. You're very very toxic just from that alone. So when it, when we look at these products, one of the biggest concerns are the ones that we have the most exposures to. So when you talk about minimizing your exposures, that is really important, minimizing your exposures because you're always constantly being exposed. You've got to minimize those. So look at the things that you are exposed to the most, right? So here's a couple things that I would say that, that you know we're exposed to the most. One, the air. Um, you know, if you don't have an air filter, you know, get one because that's an easy, an easy fix. You know, something like getting off of a medication uh, might not necessarily be easy, even though that is incredibly toxic. That's a chemical compound that your liver has to work to break down and metabolize and get rid of. Um, but that's not quite as easy. You know, I'm not going to tell you to just go out and dump your medication right away. You got to look for the cause. You got to work with a wellness provider that's that's you know going to show you exactly how to do that. But going out and getting an air filter, boom, done. Uh, go out and get an air filter. You know, here in Utah, we have the inversions, the dreaded inversions, which is just nasty, nasty air pollution. And I'll tell you what, this is really scary. That you know, we think that it's that it's just kind of gross looking, and we know that it's toxic. You know, we see it on the news. The the air levels will be up in the do not go outside your home zone at, at sometimes. But here's the thing: is NBC News, or actually, excuse me, Harvard Harvard Medical. I think it was written in NBC News is where I read the article. But Harvard Research actually released a study last summer, summer of 2014, that linked air pollution to autism. So if you're not from Utah, we here in Utah have the highest autism rates anywhere in the country, higher than any other state. But then the other thing is, you know, if you look at Utah, states like Utah, Colorado, they're always at the very, very top when it comes to overall health. So you're wondering, you know, why? You know, we're not towards the top on obesity. We're not towards the top on, on things like that. Or we're one of the happiest states, too. You know, there's things like that. There are some great things about Utah. Why are we the worst in autism? Why is nobody worse than us? And what Harvard linked that to is to the air pollution, to the inversion. So you've got to be aware of these things. So air, you know, every single breath you take, there's an exposure. Here's another bi- big exposure, water, right? We all drink it. Um, and that's an exposure in and of itself, drinking your water. So put a filter on your faucet. It's really, really easy. You know, I was actually just at a store looking at some filters and replacement cartridges. You know, at the most, you're looking at 45 bucks. Uh, that's, and that was actually a shower filter. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, you know, water sink filter, you can get a filter pitcher. And there are varying levels of good, better, best when it comes to filtration. And, and you know, we can do another episode on that, but that's a whole other topic. But good, better, best, any filter is better than no filter. So in your water, there are things like fluoride, things like chlorine. They've even measured things like antibiotics and, and, and some uh, hormones and contraceptive things that are, are found, uh, trace elements of them in your water supply. So any kind of filter that can help minimize your exposure is going to help a ton. So air and water, two huge ones. The second thing that I'll say about water, though, is that when you shower or you bathe, you're actually exposed to a lot more water, about the, about the amount of water that you probably end up drinking in a day if you take a 10 to 15 minute shower. So what happens is most of us, and even some of us that, that have a filter, you know, we, we don't drink tap water, but we get in the shower and we still shower there, right? Uh, but what happens is you turn it hot. Uh, and, and then when you when it gets hot, your body sweats. So first off, a lot of times when you're in the shower, you don't realize that you're sweating, uh, but your body's sweating because that is a cooling mechanism. That's one of your body's cooling mechanisms. But in order for that to happen, your pores open up. So your pores of your skin open up, more water gets in through the pores. So you're actually taking on a lot of water while you're showering through your skin. Then another thing is it steams up. So that steam in the shower is, you know, water vapor, but there's also vapors from chlorine, from fluoride, all in there that you are breathing in as you're showering. So that's a huge one. 
get a filter on your shower. That's something I just looked at, 45 bucks. Replacement cartridge at the store I was at was 28 bucks. Um, and I've talked to some people at, you know, like here in Salt Lake at the Water Wellness Center and asked them some questions about filtration. And they said that those shower filters, typically up to two years is what they'll last. So that's great. You know, you don't need to replace it very often. 45 bucks, you go out, you slap that thing on your shower, and then you're minimizing your exposures. You're not filling your bucket as quickly. So there's two of the biggest exposures. The last one that I want to talk about, because we are going to get into this in the next few episodes, you know, where toxins are coming from, toxic top five, toxic top 10, uh, and, and especially looking in particular at these household products. So that's the next thing is when we're talking exposures, we are looking at household products. And that can be personal care products, that can be cleaning products. That's cleaners, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, deodorant, lotions, creams, makeup, um, you know, all these chemicals and things that we use on such a regular basis. You have to know what's in them. You have to know what you're getting. Because you might think, you know, well, I'm cleaning with a Clorox wipe. I'm not eating it. But in reality, you can measure the volatile organic compounds coming off of that, um, and you're breathing it in. You're breathing it in. It's getting exposed to your skin. You're putting it on your, you know, your uh, cabinet top or your countertop, and then your kids are setting their food there. Then they might, you know, kids are, they're probably going to lick the countertop, and they're literally, they are ingesting it. So you have to look at it. You know, this is your name brands like Lysol, Clorox, Windex, things like that. And so I just want to point out, you know, and especially another thing with that is, personal care products. Personal care products are huge, huge, huge. And and think about this. Who do you think is worse with this, men or women? Uh, it's absolutely women because they're using so many more personal care products than men are. You know, for me, some of the things that I've had to look at and I've had to change over, you know, I, I use a, a soap um, and, and now I use a Castile soap from Dr. Bronner's brand. I use a shampoo and I use a clean shampoo. I use a toothpaste. And I, I mean, I now have a beard, but I used to have a shaving cream. And those were really the, the products that I use. You know, I don't really wash my face. I don't really put anything on there or put anything else on my skin other than coconut oil. But, you know, my wife, she's got 20 times the num amount of products that I have. And, you know, I come from a family of, you know, two sisters and a mom. Our house is full of personal care products. So do you think that they're exposed to a lot more toxins? Absolutely. And they actually tested this. When they tested 20 girls, I think they were high school age, 20 girls they were tested, they applied an average of 17 products a day. 17 different products a day. So, you know, first off, that industry is doing great. Uh, they're getting your daughters to buy 17 different products that they use in a single day. Um, so that's amazing. <laughs> um, but with a total of 174 ingredients every single day. So when you're putting, you're talking about filling your toxicity bucket, even if it's a drop in the bucket, 174 drops a day is going to fill up a bucket pretty quickly. Would you agree with that? And that's what's happening with toxicity. You know, this starts around 14, 15 for girls. Uh, then they get on, you know, maybe an oral contraceptive or something along those lines. And then we're wondering why in our late 20s, early 30s, we're starting to have hormone imbalances. You know, we have uh, problems with infertility or we have painful periods or we get polycystic ovarian syndrome or, you know, some concern like that in our hormone system and we're wondering why. Well, this is not the way that God created our bodies. This is not the way that it was 20, 40, 60 years ago by any means. And you have to look at what is causing it and these toxins are causing it. So some of the biggest concerns in our household products are things like parabens and phthalates. You know, parabens are linked to cancer, endocrine disruption, uh, reproductive complications. And these are found in, you know, they've done, they've done studies of, of products. They tested about 25,000 products, the Environmental Working Group did, and they found parabens in over 10,000 of the products. So an overwhelming majority are going to have parabens. That's things like shampoos, conditioners, lotions, scrubs, deodorants, anything that's got like a smooth feeling. That's what parabens do. Uh, you know, a 2004 study in the UK detected parabens in breast cancer tumors in 19 out of 20 women studied. Okay, so parabens are a big deal. Another one is phthalates. Phthalates 
come from uh, plastics. You know, those are plasticizers. And that is a huge, huge deal. And I'll tell you why, you know, for me, why that's such a huge deal is because I have kids, I have babies. So if you want to see where plastics are being used a lot, go in the, go in Toys R Us, right? Or go in Babies R Us. Every single thing is plastic. Every single thing that my daughters try to put in their mouths is plastic. So we don't allow plastic toys. We use wood toys. Uh, we use dye-free toys. And, you know, th- what they've measured is that we take in about 210 micrograms a day of phthalates found in every soft and flexible plastic we use. So, you know, you're talking about your bottled water. So, you know, we talked about about filtered water, you know, so you get a water filter, but maybe you're out uh, somewhere and you don't want to drink from the drinking fountain. So you get a bottle of water, you get a Dasani or, or whatever, um, not picking on a brand there, but any bottled water. Think about that water, though. You know, first off, a lot of times they found that bottled water is not any better than, than tap water, and a lot of times it literally is tap water. Uh, but then they put it in this plastic bottle, this soft plastic bottle. Then it travels in a semi-truck, you know, maybe from California or Arizona or, you know, somewhere hot. You know, the inside of that semi is, you know, 150 degrees or something. Those plastics begin to leach into your foods. That's one of the concerns with plastics is heating them up. You know, we don't uh, we don't use a microwave much, uh, and we don't put any plastics in a dishwasher. We don't, you know, we just don't heat plastics. That's just a very bad idea. But when you're thinking about your bottled water, you're not thinking about where did it come from? Has it been heated? Because you didn't heat it up. But that will absolutely happen. It's been shown, phthalates have been shown to increase the proliferation of breast cancer tumor cells. Uh, they've even found these. This is really, really scary. They've found phthalates in umbilical cord samples. They found them in breast milk samples. Um, and yeah, they're all over plastic kids' toys. So if you've seen the book, or if you haven't, you know, look it up. There's an awesome book out there called Slow Death by Rubber Duck. Slow Death by Rubber Duck. And these two doctors looked at toxic levels and how they build up and how that toxic bucket really begins to fill up and really what happens when it overflows. So in the next few weeks, what we're going to be talking about is how your toxic bucket fills up and how you can lower it. But the last thing that I want to encourage you to go look at is, you know, one of the most uh, beneficial resources out there, one of the best resources out there in general for your health and one of the best companies that I love to support and, and, you know, help with their fundraising and anything, the Environmental Working Group. This is the same people that put out the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So you may have heard me talk about that before. The foods that are highest in pesticides and the foods that are lowest in pesticides. They've done a great job testing for toxins like pesticides in the food, but also all other toxins. And they've actually, they have what's called the skin deep database, skin deep, like as in beauty is only skin deep, Uh, skin deep database. If you go to www.ewg.org, you can find their skin deep database and you can type in whatever product you're you're looking at you know so maybe you use a mary Kay uh mascara you know i'm just making something up right now but uh maybe you use some you know some kind of beauty care product like that you can type it in the exact brand the exact make and model kind of like uh going to truecar.com and seeing you know your carfax or something that's what you can do for your products here so like here's one that that i was kind of surprised at actually pleasantly surprised but you know lysol uh, general purpose bathroom cleaner. You know, I, I figured in cool spring breeze f- smell, you know, well, that's one of the things we always talk about is that clean doesn't have a smell, but they put these fragrances, they put these uh, scents in that are actually toxic too. But there's Lysol, uh, power and free bathroom cleaner, and it scored a B. Uh, so A, B, C, D, F, you know, just like your grades, it scored a B, which I was pleasantly surprised about. You know, I would get an A if you had a choice. And it has some concern with cancer, and this is how they rank them, some concern with cancer, some concern with developmental and reproductive toxicity, some concern with skin and allergy irritation, a little bit more, and then a little bit more even with asthma and respiratory issues. But you can type in every single ingredient. You can also scroll down and they will break down all the ingredients on there. So say you want to look at your Lysol wipes, say you want to look at your Clorox bleach, type it in there, they will break down every single ingredient and tell you why it is a concern. So here, here's like one that I see that's uh, 
dipropylene glycol butyl ether, ether. So, you know, if you read that on the back of your product, first off, you're not going to have any idea what it means unless you have pretty advanced training in chemistry. You don't know what that means. But here's the concern. As you type that in, the concern is cancer, developmental, endocrine, and reproductive effects, damage to your DNA, respiratory effect, nervous system effects, digestive system effects, skin irritation, allergies, damage to your vision. So that particular ingredient was rated as a C. Uh, and so you can look up each ingredient in a product or you can look up the product as a whole. So one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to do is go to that website, www.ewg.org. That's in the show notes. So make sure you click on the show notes to get some of these links and to get some of these resources. The other thing that I'm going to put into the show notes is we have several uh, pretty educational short videos uh, on this, on how I choose products, on how personal care products add to your toxicity bucket even showing how to use the Skin Deep database from ewg.org. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes to our YouTube page, and you can go to the YouTube page and you can watch some of these archived videos that we shot a while back, but still really, really relevant, really, really good information. Start wrapping your head around this thing called toxicity. Start learning and educating yourself on how you can continue to minimize your exposures, slow down how fast your bucket is filling up. And in the next couple of weeks, we're really going to dive into how you can take that bucket, flip it upside down and just dump it out, just detox, just empty it out. And sometimes for a lot of us, that's what we need is we need to just dump the bucket out, then start filling it up more slowly. Um, But a lot of us are to that point where we need to dump the bucket out. So we're going to show you exactly how to do that. So make sure that you stay tuned in the next couple weeks as we continue to dive into toxicity. Check out the ewg.org, the Skin Deep database. Check out the YouTube page so that you can find those videos and continue learning about this. Tune in next week as we talk more about toxicity right here on the Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor. A last thing I will say too, in the show notes, find us on Instagram, find us on Facebook, find us on the website. The Real Health Doctor is the name. Uh, You can find us on Instagram under that name. You can find us on Facebook. Also, just go to the website, www.realhealthwithdrtaylor.com. Thanks for tuning in. We look forward to talking next week as we continue to dive in to toxicity. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Craig. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.